If you haven't heard part one of the idea of choice, I strongly urge you to go back and listen because I'm jumping right in, like right in. Okay. All right. Let's get to part two. So I had to drop out. There was no way I was going to pay more money and add more time to the situation. I was done. I was damn near defeated. But before accepting that defeat, I thought I'd try one last thing. Begging. Since fourth grade, the second time, I started to understand the meaning of the phrase building a rapport, especially with teachers. Shout out to Miss Lena at Murphy's Traditional Academy, fourth and fifth grade class of 2001 through 2003. You rock. She was the first teacher to really get through to me. She saw me. I'm pretty sure being one of three kids who repeated the fourth grade has something to do with it. (laughs) You ain't fell in my class. Regardless of what it was, I started to understand how to succeed in school. Her class was organized and exciting, so I made some learning adjustments according to her class. So whatever she was teaching, I would memorize it, get an A, and after my first couple of days, it clicked. School finally fucking clicked. One particular adjustment I noticed, though, was leniency. I would receive leniency because of, let's call it, the human factor. I would get the same written question wrong, but I would get a different amount of points taken off when the kid next to me, even though that kid's answer would be better or just like mine, would receive more points off. Why? The human factor. She knew me. She was paying attention to me. My dad was a professor during this time, and so I started to pay attention to him and how he would grade papers. He would have a story about every student as he held their test in his hands for grading. He would talk about how they acted in his class or even if they showed up to his class. Now, how in the world are you going to be fair when you're already annoyed at this assignment because of the student before you start grading the paper? You can't. You won't. Not unconsciously. At the end of the day, if a human is behind or between you and what you want, the human factor will come into play. We see it all the time at restaurants, the airports, Target. Say you're checking out at the grocery store and the cashier's lights come on. They look at you and they say, you're the last one or I'm closed. But whatever you say or do next really determines the outcome. Guaranteed. Say the cashier says, I'm closed. If you say, please, please, I'll just buy these two things and I'm paying with cash. Chances are they'll check you out right then and there. Regardless of the fact that they just made that statement and regardless of the fact that they just cut off their light, the human factor. So going back to my story, I drove to school to drop out, but a piece of me wanted to see if I could use that human factor to my advantage one last time. I had done it before. I had done it for years. Again, I'm not saying that I didn't study or work hard. Believe me, I did. School did not come easy to me. What I'm saying is teachers are human. In college, I didn't take my time to build my rapport with these professors like I'd used to. I was able to establish a relationship with some, but boy, did it take effort. I mean, the most you'd see these teachers would be three hours a week, and that's it. And not to mention, out of 100 plus students versus nine hours a week, like in high school, say the class is an hour and a half, three to five days, and out of only like 30 students. That's why those office hours are so crucial. So yeah. I had to distribute my efforts accordingly, but it didn't work this time. I think they could tell I was scrambling and I wasn't sincere in my approach. Plus, who wants to help someone who hasn't shown effort all semester? I don't blame them for being dismissive or annoyed when I came to their office right before the holidays. To them, I was just another lazy kid who thought they could do an extra credit assignment and it would all be better just in time to receive a passing grade. When I got back to my car, I felt even more shame than before because it was solidified. My grade, my situation, my future. Before heading to the registrar's office to drop out, I sat in my car and just sobbed for what felt like an hour. After getting myself together, I decided to call my brother and tell him the situation. At this point in time, my brother and I would talk to each other on a weekly basis, if not every other day on the phone. Anytime I was in a rut about school or just to chat. 
our consistent chat started when he helped me get through biochem after failing it the first time. We would talk for hours about life, college, of course, everything. One time we talked for six and a half hours straight. <laughs> no lie. He was getting his doctorate, so we both had a lot of free time on our hands. After I told him what was going on, he abruptly interrupted me and aggressively asked, Well, what do you want? Actually, let me try that again. Well, what do you want? I actually couldn't answer him. I just wanted this to be over. I wanted to stop being ashamed. I wanted to stop feeling behind. I wanted to stop crying. But I knew what he meant. He meant what did I want out of life? I never truly thought about it. I mean, could I even answer that question honestly at that point? Aren't we all just a summation of our environment? I mean, what a loaded question. And right now, in the thick of it, what an asshole. I responded something like, I'm 24, I'm old, it's too late, what I want doesn't matter. And he said, well, if you think so, it's your life, only you, and you chose this. Right then and there, the very idea of choice expanded for me. He was right. I did. I chose that major. I chose those classes during those particular times. I chose not to build a rapport with those particular teachers and the list goes on from there. Right or wrong, good or bad, these were my choices. And now he's asking me, well, what was it all for? And I couldn't answer. I was going 100 miles per hour in some obscure direction with my eyes closed. And that right there is the reason for this podcast, Now College, to share our experiences, to help the next person. My brother was speaking to me from a place of personal experience. He started off in engineering, but soon changed his major to biochemistry after a really bad semester. So I believed his advice. And I recognize that that was my privilege, to be born last, to see what my siblings went through, and to learn from their mistakes as well as their triumphs. Well, here are people's stories all in one place. We all go through school, so let's spill the tea and share the wisdom. If you know someone or even yourself who's going through education system right now, I urge you to share this with them. Or even if you're not in school, you can still share this podcast for just some good-ass stories. Now, back to my story. My brother exposing my choices to me wasn't the first time the idea of choice crept into my head. It was one of my first weeks in my freshman dorm, and I couldn't go to sleep. So I looked out the window, it was late at night, creepy, and I thought to myself, yo, I could just put on my shoes and go outside right now. No one would say anything. But it's kind of creepy looking out there, so I'm gonna just stay right here. But I could. I could. I'll never forget that moment. It was so insignificant and just so basic, but I'll never forget it. But now, the idea of choice had to be put into action. If I dropped out in that moment, or I kept going and registered for the next semester in that moment, it was still going to be my choice. Last thing my brother told me after he asked me, well, what do you want, was... After you find what you want, make a plan, starting from the end, and see if you need a degree or not. So I drove home, went to my room, took out a blank sheet of paper, stared at it to figure out what to write down, but instead, I just cried. For two days. And as the weeks followed, life seemed to get worse. So there were even more tears. I was fired from my restaurant job, my car broke down, credit card bills were past due, and my dad straight up told me, since you're not graduating this year, you're on your own. Looking back, all these things happening to anyone would break them. And it did. It broke me. But shame is not even the word to describe how I felt during that holiday season. But it was what I needed. I was going through the motions and I had checked out. But God clearly shut every door, kept all the distractions of a job, school, even my car working to go out and about kept me at home in solitude for my good. Later, my brother sent me two books to help me start my quest. They were What Color Is Your Parachute? 
and The Alchemist. Both very wonderful books, but just the beginning. I continue to consume a multitude of books like The 4-Hour Work Week, Seat of the Soul, Deep Work, The Social Animal, TED Talks, specifically Your Body Language May Shape Who You Are. Ugh, oh, classic video. Super Soul Sundays, documentaries, vlogs, podcasts, apps, even regular Sunday church hit different. If it had something to do with discovering yourself, I consumed it. I was too attached to material things. No, I'm not talking about clothes and jewelry and cars. I'm talking about status, trophies, awards, degrees. <laughs> did I even actually enjoy what I was doing? Or did I enjoy keeping up with the Joneses? When people ask me, are you in school? I would say, yep, because that's what people in their early 20s were doing. They were in school. But it's a dangerous game when it's at the expense of your peace. Bars. Out of all I consumed, one piece of media really stood out to me during this journey. It's called Find Your Genius by Andy Drish of The Foundation. It's about an hour long video and his intro was phenomenal. He mentioned how everyone has something they do very well and not only they do it very well, but they enjoy doing it. And whatever that thing is, Figure out how to add value to the world by doing it. Halfway through the video, he puts you to work. He asks you to write down things that give you joy. It could be music, scheduling, conversing, projects, whatever. The point is to do a mind dump of these things. Next, look over the list and see if you can group them into a wider category, such as organization skills, people skills, entertainment, etc. Now, create a quadrant and title them accordingly. The first square, genius. The next, excellence. The next, competence. And the last one, incompetence. Genius is something that you love to do. And not only you love to do, it gives you energy while doing it. Next, excellence. Something that you do pretty well, but over time, you're going to get drained. Competence, something that you're okay at, but you don't like doing it. Incompetence, something that you suck at and you don't like doing it. No one should ever ask you to do it. It shouldn't be part of your life. So now that we have these definitions, place your categories in the appropriate quadrants. Now I'm paraphrasing the heck out of this video. So please try and find the source. If you can, it's truly worth it. At the time, I found my genius. It's entertainment, specifically entertainment like documentaries or podcasts like this one. I love how entertainment gets my brain going, which leads me to researching, which leads to thought-provoking ideas, which leads to critical thinking conversations, which leads to small actions, which leads to big actions, which leads to changing the world. Remember I said I like to help people? Well, this was how I was gonna do it, through entertainment, medicine and the candy. So now I realize I wanna create content, but what would I do? Would I write, would I direct, act? I looked at the credits of one of my favorite movies and I made a list of each interesting sounding job and looked up what those jobs were in detail and of course how much they paid, you know, working backwards. And almost all of them required a bachelor's degree, even the entry level ones. So that was my answer. I couldn't drop out. So now I gotta develop a plan to get out of college. Operation Graduate. Since I was on academic probation and my dad cut me off, I had to find some money. So I applied for one last credit card and only by the grace of God, it went through a credit of $300. Enough for one class and no textbooks. Later, I applied for another CNA job because those are pretty easy to get. And I was able to fix my car later on. But most of all, I had a plan. January 2015 comes around and I'm still emotionally sore. Working wasn't easy, school definitely wasn't easy. I would constantly be crying or just plain sad. A lot of it had to do with thinking about the time I thought I'd lost from the lack of making choices for myself. All that time trying to catch up and claim my affirmations from others. It was childish and not real. That pressure I put on myself was taught, but I chose to continue to carry it. It was time for me to put that down and redefine what I wanted out of life. Long story longer, in the fall of 2015, I took that introduction to media production for non-majors course that truly solidified my genius. I bought my first DSLR camera with a MacBook Pro and Final Cut. 
I made a visual album. Yes, I did. Thank you, Beyonce. And I never got tired of any part of the process. However, I did pay attention to the parts I truly enjoyed more than others. The first was video editing, and the second was writing the songs, more specifically the melodies. Oh yeah, I have a background in music. I was in band from middle school to high school and pep band through college. I changed my major one last time to the science concentration so that I could take courses outside of the nutrition department. So that meant more biologies and chemistries, but at this point, I trusted their department more than the nutrition department, and also because I was closer to finishing that degree than the dietetics degree because of all those Fs. Remember, this is Operation Graduation. I just needed to get that receipt, the diploma. I later graduated with a degree in nutrition with a concentration in science. I would later continue to film more content before moving to Los Angeles, the film capital of America, and continue my journey to redefining my genius and being grateful for every step and misstep along the way. Now, I know this episode and pretty much the first season of Now College has been pretty heavy, but there were definitely fun times and unforgettable times too. Making friends, the parties, roommates, the hallmates, and the drama, the road trips, the class drama, bar hopping, Halloween nights, relationships, spring break, more parties, sports, events, and games, homecomings, clubbing, all-nighters. Did I mention parties? It was truly an experience, and if I knew what I know now, and I had to give advice to myself, I would say, buy shares of Bitcoin, which were at $250 a share, and stop. Check in with yourself before you make that next major choice. What is the intention behind it? What do you want? Thank you. You've just finished listening to part two season finale of Now College. Thank you. I want to publicly thank my siblings, Liz, Quadro, and Kofi for being there for me. You know what it is. I also want to thank every single person who listened to this podcast and shared it. For more episodes, check out Now College on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Now College and TikTok at Now College Podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes. And remember, research your own experiences, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. Bruce Lee, God bless.